Hi, this is Daily Mira Online and I'm your host, Azar Khari. Today we have with us the talented and athletic Matthew Abe Singer, who has made Sri Lanka proud. And we have with us his father slash coach slash mentor, Manoj Abe Singer. So Matthew, my first question to you is, at what age did you start training? So I started at four. Um, my older brother, Andrew, uh, didn't know how to swim. I also didn't know how to swim, so my dad thought it would be a good idea to put us in swim lessons just so we could be safe in the water. Um, from there, we were both just really pretty talented, I feel like, and uh, had a natural feel for the water, so yeah. we just continued from there. And yeah. Is swimming a passion, or do you think you're doing it because maybe your other family members did it as well? Yeah, so like I said, I think I first got into it uh, just for safety reasons, but since then it's, it's definitely a passion. I don't do anything because other people do it. If, I, if I'm doing something, it's because I want to do it. If I didn't want to swim, I, I just wouldn't do it. So uh, it's definitely a passion. I love swimming. I've always loved swimming. There's obvi obviously certain parts of it that I like better. Uh, I don't like every long aerobic practice that I have to do, but I love racing, so I do it. Uh, I love competing. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely a passion. And how many medals have you won so far? So, uh, I've won a lot of medals in swimming at nationals and stuff like that. Um, I can go through a couple pretty big medals that are important to me. So, um, in 2013 I won a bronze medal uh, at the Youth Asian Games. That was the first time a Sri Lankan swimmer had won a medal uh, at, at a games like that. Um, and then I guess fast forward to 2016, I won seven gold medals two silver medals and I think one bronze medal at the 2016 South Asian Games in India. And then obviously a couple days ago we just got back from uh, Nepal for the 2019 South Asian Games. And I won seven gold medals there as well as one silver medal. So Mr. Manoj Abhisin, you must be a very proud father that your son has reached a lot of uh, achievements, milestones. So. What do you have to say? Yes, I am very proud of what Matthew has achieved. Uh, I'm more proud because he has been swimming for 19 years and he hasn't let up one little bit. He was talking about how passionate he is about swimming and I have witnessed his first hand. Mm -hmm. uh, since about 10 years old until until 2017 and he went to the States to train with Ohio State. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for me, nothing is meaningful, medals are not meaningful if you haven't um, done the work and you have enjoyed the work and I must say this, I've coached a lot of swimmers in my career, um, both here and in the US and I've coached um, several people who are number one in the US in the age groups. Um, I have co uh, coached many swimmers who have been Ohio State champions. I haven't coached I have only coached one Matthew Abbasinger. When I say that, I don't mean as a father. I mean as a coach who has coached a lot of talented swimmers. A driven, dedicated, goal-oriented uh, swimmer like Matthew, I haven't coached before. Or since he left here in 2017. That's so, right. for that fact, I'm very, very proud. So the Olympics is next year. So, again, this, is, this could be a question for both of you. And, uh, what is the game plan? What do you all have any specific game plan and tactics, or do you have it, or do you want to keep it a secret? So your competition. Well, there's no reason to keep it a secret, but because Matthew is uh, now predominant training under the Ohio State coaching staff, mm -hmm. I will allow him to answer that question. Yeah. So um, transitioning from uh, swimming the South Asian Games to try, trying to qual qualify for the Olympics, it's two completely different different things. Mm -hmm. um, at the South Asian Games, my target was to win as many medals as I could for Sri Lanka. Um, at the Olympics, my goal is much more specific. It's to qualify, for, to get the A cut in one event at the Olympics. Maybe one, one or two um, would be really, really cool. But it's, it's just completely, it's a completely different kind of focus. So the next eight months, um, I'm living and breathing just, just to qualify for the Olympics. That's my only goal for the next eight months. That's what I'll, that's what I'll be doing for the next eight months, just targeting that. Who is your biggest like icon or role model? Um, that's really hard. I'm not. I'm not really the kind of person who's who's big into role models. Um, obviously, my dad, just because he's my coach. But other than that, I can't think of a specific like. I think you're asking like about an athlete who's my icon. Um, 
I can't really think of any. I, I guess I would say Muhammad Ali. I really liked the way, how confident he was. I liked the way he fought when, when, when he used to fight. Um, so yeah, I'd say Muhammad Ali, I guess. That's good to ask. Can I add to that? Sure. Um, I have been all around the world with Matthew um, since, since he was about 13 or 14 years old, since 2010. Before that, all around the United States. Um, actually, I have never seen him go up to someone and ask for an autograph. I asked why. He said, I admire what they do, but if I'm going to get in the pool and race them, I don't want the autograph. That makes sense to me. So Matthew, how do you balance like studying and swimming? Yeah, so this is a question I get a lot actually, um, and it's a question that I love to answer because I can, I can be an example for younger swimmers. So um, when I was doing O levels and A levels, I didn't take a single day off practice. He can vouch for that because he was my coach at both. Not a single day off. Even if I had an exam, I would still be practicing at least one time, usually two or three times that day. So um, people who say you can't do both, that's just not true. I had good O level and good A level results. And because I didn't stop swimming, I was able to improve to such a point that um, I received a scholarship from a, a lot of universities actually in the US and then I, uh, I chose to go to the Ohio State University because I liked their education program and I liked their swim team. I was also familiar with the area because when we lived in the US we lived in Ohio. So um, I think it would have been much harder to get a scholarship like that if I had stopped swimming and maybe done a little bit better on my exams. I still don't think I would have got the scholarship that I got. So I think the main thing is just you have to sacrifice if you, if you want to do both. If you want to do a sport or do whatever you're passionate about as well as um, be good in your education at the same time. Like you can't be out going out partying and all that stuff. So a lot of people in my grade were doing that obviously because not a lot of them were trying to qualify for the Olympics or trying to go to world championships or trying to win medals at South Asian Games. So they had more, more free time but yeah it's just it's about sacrifice. If I could add to that. Um, this club was created by me in 2010, Kilabel Aquatics. Matthew and his brothers and two others were the original members. We had five swimmers. Um, I would be the first to admit living in a third world country like Sri Lanka, with budget constraints when the US and China and, and uh, Japan and all of those, Australia, England, all of those countries who are really up there, yeah. and they are throwing millions of dollars, not rupees, uh, to improve or maintain the standards of their swimming. It is very difficult for us to um, to compete with uh, money that is being put by the parents. You know? So uh, early on when I moved here, I decided the best way, if we want to get to the Olympic level or above, um, the best way to do that would be to, uh, for me to get the swimmers in Sri Lanka to a certain standard where they can qualify for US, uh, US scholarships at US universities where they would, they would have access to the same, same kind of resources that all of those other countries have. And it's, it's nothing new. That is being done by many, many countries in the world. If you take the the gold medal tally at Olympics, swimming events. Uh, the US uh, gold medals are not just the ones that are owned by the US national team. There are many more swimmers who have come from all around the world, training these US universities, come and swim for their countries and win gold medals. So I, early on I decided that's a model for Sri Lanka, for me at least, to do, uh, because I don't have the resources to take them all the way up to the top. I can take them to a certain level, um, um, there are many reasons why I can't do that. One, the resources. Two, the culture in Sri Lanka where people stop. Uh, they, they, are, they, are not, they don't think there is value from sport. Um, they don't think, so they think, okay, you do it to a certain extent. By the time O-level and A-level comes around, it's time to stop and pursue studies. Um, we don't have to go to the Olympics. We'll go where we were a couple of days ago in Nepal. The Indian team, the average age would have been in the 20s. Yeah. I, I don't think there were many swimmers who were under 19 years of age. Where we had five people who were 15, 16, 17. In the, on the boys' side, another five or so 14-year-old um, girls. So we can't send uh, girls and boys 
compete against men's and women. Mm -hmm. He's 23 years old. He still has another at least four years left in his swimming career. But not many Sri Lankan swimmers reach his age. They are not swimming at age of 23. He is the only one who was there in Kathmandu, representing Sri Lanka, who was about 20 years of age. And he's making Sri Lanka proud. He's making Sri Lanka proud for those reasons. He had been trained properly. He had been sent to a place where uh, they can complete the process that was started here. Yeah. And he's swimming at an age where he has, he has, um, he has reached his physical maturity. His peak. Correct. No. So those are the reasons why Sri Lankan swimming hasn't gone anywhere. So I think we have enough depth now to, to try and foster this program. And uh, I wanted to add that and say that that's the reason. It's not because we don't have talented kids. It's because we don't have the commitment for various reasons. Basically, it's important to have that tunnel vision and at the same time keep your priorities straight. You've got to be a student athlete. Uh, obviously, if you just do studies and, and you have 24 hours of the day other than the time you do for, for various other activities like sleeping, eating and whatever to, to um, put to, aside towards uh, studying, you will do well, but is that what you want? Is there no, um, doesn't sport give you anything? No, no values, doesn't t teach you anything to be successful in life after your sport is done. I believe they do, uh, the sport does, and I believe the Sri Lankan culture doesn't recognize that. And that's the reason why many sports, we are not at world level, not because we are not talented. Only cricket, because there is money in it. There is a future in it. People stay the course. What other sport do you show me in any, any other sport in Sri Lanka where that happens? So hopefully in terms of swimming, Sri Lanka gets more recognition. I hope so. So, Matthew, during like, most at least they have some type of warm-up session, like a mantra, like so for some it's a song, for some it's like, yeah, listening to music or even a prayer. What do you have, like before a uh, part of competition, like, what do you do, what, how do you prepare yourself to get into that mood? Uh, so what I say to myself, I can't really say right now because it's not very appropriate. But uh, I don't know. I'm the kind of swimmer that I need to get like fired up, pumped up. Uh, if I don't, I'm not going to swim well. So um, some of the things I say to myself are uh, not that nice. But uh, it's, I think for me, it's just music. I love listening to music. So I'm never like listening to the crowd or anything like that. I always have my headphones on, just getting in the zone, getting ready to race. So I think music plays a big part for me. What type of genre of musicians? Definitely rap, rap music, yeah. I, I mean, I don't always listen to rap. Like, when I'm not swimming, I'll, I listen to every single type of music. But before me, I'm listening to music that's going to get me hyped up, ready to go. So, usually rap. So, again, Matthew, during the competitions, obviously, you're in that, you're having that adrenaline rush, where right? you're swimming back and forth. Can you hear the crowd roaring? Like, your name or, like, motivating you? Or do you just, like, you're so focused that... I'm I'm so focused I don't hear anything the, like I don't hear anything until I touch the wall and I'm done uh, during the race I'm just thinking about executing executing a plan like before it also I'm just thinking about executing the plan that I need to execute the way that I need to execute it I don't I don't hear anything now apart from swimming what other career like would you pursue if it if there wasn't swimming in your life? Yeah, so I've always said that, I think from a very young age, my dad can attest to this, I've always said that um, there's a limit to how much I can impact the sport of swimming in Sri Lanka as an athlete, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, after I'm done swimming, I can have a much, much bigger impact on, on way more people's lives, way more swimmers' lives um, than I can as a swimmer. So mm -hmm. definitely something that involves the sport of swimming. Like I, I can do outside stuff as well. Like real estate is really interesting to me. Uh, my uncle does real estate. I've done that with him before. But I, that would be something like on the side. I definitely want to have, do something in the sport of swimming where I can change people's lives because I believe that swimming can give people, uh, as my dad was saying, I, I believe that swimming can give people a really good future. So yeah, something like that. So in terms of daily routine, it doesn't have to be strictly working out. It can be like basically even waking up early and all. What is your daily routine plan? And you can also add to this uh, if you like. What's your coaching regimen, like the plan and, yeah. So, um, it differs a little bit by day, but I'll take you through a Monday, for example. So I live in the U.S. now, I go to, uh, I go to college at yeah. The Ohio State University. 
So I wake up at uh, 4.50 for practice, pra walk or drive to the pool, depending on the weather outside. If it's really cold, I'll drive. Um, practice starts at 5.30, goes until 7.30. Um, and then I'm, when I'm done with practice, I go get something to eat. And then throughout the day, uh, I have classes. So I go to my classes. And then we have another practice at 2 p.m., uh, which goes till 4 p.m. And then after, my, after the 4 p.m. practice, we have a weight session, which starts at 4.30 and ends at 5.30. And then after, uh, after 5.30, I'll try to get home quickly, take a shower, get my homework done, and then the rest of the night, I just play video games, watch a movie, hang out with my girlfriend, hang out with my friends, um, try to relax a little bit because I think it's important to decompress every single day just because it's a constant grind in swimming. You're not really taking breaks, you're doing the same thing pretty much every day. So I think uh, having a little bit of fun every single day is important. Exactly. It's important to focus on your goals, keep your priorities straight, but also you need to enjoy life. At the same exactly, time. definitely. So this is a question for both. Uh, any piece of advice to future swimmers of Sri Lanka who want to continue in this field, like in this sport? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I would say, as my dad said, just don't stop, don't stop swimming or don't stop whatever your sport is for studies. You can, you can do both as I've done, as a lot of other, not a lot, but a couple other Sri Lankan swimmers who are now in college have done. Um, I think that's something that's really important. And then just stay focused on what the goal is. Don't let little things like one party here or hanging out with friends there distract you. you um, if you have a goal in swimming, just push through and and really, really see how far you can take take it. Not just in swimming, whatever you're doing, just see how far you can take it. And Mr. Manoj? Um, do a lot of sports when you're young. That way your body has a chance to develop equally. Um, also, you get experience different sports. Pick one that you like, whether it's swimming or something else. Uh, once you do that, Find a coach who's knowledgeable in the field. Uh, don't switch coaches back and forth. Um, especially as you get older. Then I think I need to speak to the parents, not the, not the swimmers. Um, to the parents, don't make your dreams the child's dream. All you need to show your child is that you love them irrespective of their performance in any given sport. Leave the coaching to the coaches and those are the, the children that I have seen who have gone the furthest in the sport of swimming. Not the people who are being pushed by the, their, um, their parents, um, not, the, not the people who have been forced into swimming if they don't like it. Because um, when they come to us, the coaches, if they don't have a love for the sport, the child will come when they are young because the parents are forcing them. The child will do what is asked when they are a little older because the coach is forceful. But at a certain age, like for instance Matthew age, Matthew's age, there is no way that swimmer is going to do what needs to be done if the motivation doesn't come from in here. So that's the best advice that I can give any swimmer going forward or any sportsman for that matter. So this is going to be the last question for the interview. We just want to ask, uh, during the South Asian Games, what was the plan? Just like, did you all have a game plan? Or you just went all out, you felt the training was enough? So we, I will let him answer first. <coughs> so yeah, we had a game plan. Um, the game plan was to do the best that I could for Sri Lanka. So. Obviously, in 2016, I won seven gold, so there was high expectations for me going into the meet. I knew that. I accepted it. Um, I was willing to, willing to carry that burden, so I wanted to just win as many golds as I could. I knew that if I went all out in every single event, that that wasn't going to happen. So there were some events that I could win easier than others. So, for example, the 200 freestyle was a pretty easy win for me, but later in the day, I had the 100 fly and the 400 freestyle relay, which were both going to be extremely hard to win. So I held back a little bit in the 200 freestyle, just did enough to get the gold medal, which is what my goal was, and then really put my full effort into those other events. So um, I think 
that mm, the way I approached every single event was different. I didn't approach any event the same either time, so I think the way I conserved my energy was the reason I was able to uh, to get the seven goals and, and every day before my races and, mo and months in advance my dad and I spoke about like game plans and how we were going to do it and how we were going to get enough rest in between events because I was swimming so many so so yeah I think we pretty much executed the plan to perfection so um, I was a head coach of the Sri Lankan team for South Asian Games in Kathmandu um, I had the, the worst scenario a coach can be faced with we have our best swimmers, Matthew's brother Kyle, Charan Petisova, and Kimiko Rahim. We lost them due to injury or sickness. Um, it's very hard to replace uh, that caliber of athlete. So we had to make uh, we had to make changes and change our game plan a bit. But um, I think we managed it. So that's why we came back with the number of medals that we did. Um, but if those three have been there, we would be at a very different place today. Um, I don't think we have lost them forever. So next edition of the South Games, I'm hoping that we will have all of them and we will be at full strength. Um, even at half strength or whatever you want to call it, um, we were almost neck and neck in certain events with, uh, with India. Uh, that we were not in 2016. So we are on the right track. We just need to um, we just need to uh, make it a little bit more for the next edition. We're really grateful and thankful for your contribution to the sport and to obviously Sri Lanka for making our country proud. And we hope the teammates get well soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming to the show, Mr. Matthew Abbey. Of course. Senna. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Thank you really for having us. Yeah. We got a lot of insight on swimming, the competitive nature of it, also about uh, the team teams and what we're doing. So thank you very much. So there you have it, guys. We're glad to have with us on the show Matthew and Manoj Abbey Singer. We hope Sri Lanka continues in this positive direction. This is Daily Mirror Online signing off.